In astronomy, Kepler's laws of planetary motion are three scientific laws describing the motion of planets around the Sun. The orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the Sun at one of the two foci. A line segment joining a planet and the Sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. The square of the orbital period of a planet is proportional to the cube of the semi major axis of its orbit. Most planetary orbits are nearly circular, and careful observation and calculation are required in order to establish that they are not perfectly circular. Calculations of the orbit of Mars, whose published values are somewhat suspect, indicated an elliptical orbit. From this, Johannes Kepler inferred that other bodies in the Solar System, including those farther away from the Sun, also have elliptical orbits. Kepler's work published between 1609 and 1619 improved the heliocentric theory of Nicolaus Copernicus, explaining how the planet's speeds varied, and using elliptical orbits rather than circular orbits with epicycles, Isaac Newton showed in 1687 that relationships like Kepler's would apply in the Solar System to a good approximation, as a consequence of his own laws of motion and law of universal gravitation. Comparison to Copernicus. Kepler's laws improved the model of Copernicus. If the eccentricities of the planetary orbits are taken as zero, then Kepler basically agreed with Copernicus. The planetary orbit is a circle The Sun is at the center of the orbit The speed of the planet in the orbit is constant The eccentricities of the orbits of those planets known to Copernicus and Kepler are small, so the foregoing rules give fair approximations of planetary motion, but Kepler's laws fit the observations better than does the model proposed by Copernicus. Kepler's corrections are not at all obvious The planetary orbit is not a circle, but an ellipse. The Sun is not at the center but at a focal point of the elliptical orbit. Neither the linear speed nor the angular speed of the planet in the orbit is constant, but the area speed is constant. The eccentricity of the orbit of the Earth makes the time from the March equinox to the September equinox, around 186 days, unequal to the time from the September equinox to the March equinox, around 179 days. A diameter would cut the orbit into equal parts, but the plane through the Sun parallel to the equator of the Earth cuts the orbit into two parts with areas in a 186 to 179 ratio, so the eccentricity of the orbit of the Earth is approximately e approximately equals π 4 186 minus 179 186 plus 179 approximately equals 0.015 display style e approximately frac pi 4 frac 186 to 179 186 plus 179 approximately 0.015 which is close to the correct value 0.016710219 cirrus orbit the calculation is correct when perihelion, the date the Earth is closest to the Sun, falls on a solstice. The current perihelion, near January 3, is fairly close to the solstice of December 21 or 22. <laughs> Nomenclature It took nearly two centuries for the current formulation of Kepler's work to take on its settled form. Voltaire's Elements de la philosophie de Newton Elements of Newton's philosophy of 1738 was the first publication to use the terminology of «laws». The Biographical Encyclopedia of Astronomers in its article on Kepler p. 620 states that the terminology of scientific laws for these discoveries was current at least from the time of Joseph de Lalande. It was the exposition of Robert Small, in an account of the astronomical discoveries of Kepler 1814 that made up the set of three laws, by adding in the third. Small also claimed, against the history, that these were empirical laws, based on inductive reasoning. Further, the current usage of Kepler's second law is something of a misnomer. Kepler had two versions, related in a qualitative sense the distance law and the area law. The area law is what became the second law in the set of three, but Kepler did himself not privilege it in that way. History 
Johannes Kepler published his first two laws about planetary motion in 1609, having found them by analyzing the astronomical observations of Tycho Brahe. Kepler's third law was published in 1619. Kepler had believed in the Copernican model of the Solar System, which called for circular orbits, but he could not reconcile Brahe's highly precise observations with a circular fit to Mars orbit—Mars coincidentally having the highest eccentricity of all planets except Mercury. His first law reflected this discovery. Kepler in 1621 and Godefroy Wendelin in 1643 noted that Kepler's third law applies to the four brightest moons of Jupiter. The second law, in the area law form, was contested by Nicolaus Mercator in a book from 1664, but by 1670 his philosophical transactions were in its favor. As the century proceeded it became more widely accepted. The reception in Germany changed noticeably between 1688, the year in which Newton's Principia was published and was taken to be basically Copernican, and 1690, by which time work of Gottfried Leibniz on Kepler had been published. Newton was credited with understanding that the second law is not special to the inverse square law of gravitation, being a consequence just of the radial nature of that law, while the other laws do depend on the inverse square form of the attraction. Karl Runge and Wilhelm Lenz much later identified a symmetry principle in the phase space of planetary motion the orthogonal group O acting which accounts for the first and third laws in the case of Newtonian gravitation, as conservation of angular momentum does via rotational symmetry for the second law. Topic formulary The mathematical model of the kinematics of a planet subject to the laws allows a large range of further calculations. Topic first law of Kepler The orbit of every planet is an ellipse with the Sun at one of the two foci. Mathematically, an ellipse can be represented by the formula, r equals p1 plus epsilon cos theta, displaystyle r equals frac p1 plus var epsilon cos theta, where p displaystyle p is the semi-lattice rectum, epsilon is the eccentricity of the ellipse, r is the distance from the Sun to the planet, and theta is the angle to the planet's current position from its closest approach, as seen from the Sun. So, r, theta are polar coordinates. For an ellipse zero at theta equals zero degrees, perihelion, the distance is minimum r min equals p one plus epsilon display style r underscore min equals frac p one plus var epsilon at theta topic ninety degrees and at theta two hundred seventy degrees the distance is equal to p display style p at theta equals one hundred eighty degrees, aphelion, the distance is maximum by definition, aphelion is, invariably, perihelion plus one hundred eighty degrees r max equals p one minus epsilon display style r underscore max equals frac p one var epsilon the semi-major axis a is the arithmetic mean between r min and r max, r max minus a equals a minus r min equals p one minus epsilon two display style begin aligned r underscore max Max a and equals a r underscore min three p t a and equals frac p one var epsilon caret two end aligned. The semi minor axis b is the geometric mean between r min and r max. r max b equals b r min b equals p one minus epsilon two display style begin aligned frac r underscore max b and equals frac b r underscore min three p t b and equals frac p sqrt one var epsilon caret two end aligned the semi lattice rectum p is the harmonic mean between r min and r max one r min minus one p equals one p minus one r max p a equals r max r min equals b2 display style begin aligned frac 1 r underscore min frac 1 p and equals frac 1 p frac 1 r underscore max 3 pt pa and equals r underscore max r underscore min equals b caret 2 end aligned the eccentricity epsilon is the coefficient of variation between r min and r max epsilon equals r max minus r min r max plus r min Display style var epsilon equals frac r underscore max r underscore min r underscore max plus r underscore min. The area of the ellipse is a equals pi ab. Display style a equals pi ab. The special case of a circle is epsilon topic zero, resulting in r p topic r min r max topic ab and a equals pi r two. Topic second law of Kepler: a line joining a planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. 
The orbital radius and angular velocity of the planet in the elliptical orbit will vary. This is shown in the animation, the planet travels faster when closer to the Sun, then slower when farther from the Sun. Kepler's second law states that the blue sector has constant area. In a small time d t the planet sweeps out a small triangle having base line r and height r d theta display style r d theta an area d a equals 1 2 r r d theta display style da equals frac 1 2 c d o t r c d o t road theta and so the constant aerial velocity is d a D T equals one two R two D theta D T Display style FRAC DA DT equals FRAC one two R carrot two FRAC D theta DT The area enclosed by the elliptical orbit is Pi A B display style pi ab. So the period p display style p satisfies p one two r two d theta d t equals pi a b. Display style p c d o t frac one two r caret two frac d theta d t equals pi ab, and the mean motion of the planet around the sun n equals two pi p. Display style n equals frac two pi p satisfies r two d theta equals a b n d t display style r caret 2 d theta equals a b n d t topic third law of kepler the square of the orbital period of a planet is directly proportional to the cube of the semi major axis of its orbit this captures the relationship between the distance of planets from the Sun, and their orbital periods. Kepler enunciated in 1619 this third law in a laborious attempt to determine what he viewed as the «music of the spheres» according to precise laws, and express it in terms of musical notation. So it was known as the harmonic law. Using Newton's law of gravitation, published 1687, this relation can be found in the case of a circular orbit by setting the centripetal force equal to the gravitational force. M R omega 2 equals g m m r 2. Display style Mr. Omega caret 2 equals g frac m r caret 2. Then, expressing the angular velocity in terms of the orbital period and then rearranging, we find Kepler's third law m r 2 pi t 2 equals g m m r 2 t 2 equals 4 pi 2 g m r 3 t 2 r 3 Display style Mr. Left FRAC two pi T right carrot two equals G FRAC M R carrot two right arrow T carrot two equals left FRAC four pi carrot two GM right R carrot three right arrow T carrot two prop to R carrot three 
A more detailed derivation can be done with general elliptical orbits, instead of circles, as well as orbiting the center of mass, in stead of just the large mass. This results in replacing a circular radius r with the elliptical semi-major axis a as well as replacing the large mass m with m plus m display style m plus m however with planet masses being so much smaller than the sun this correction is often ignored the full corresponding formula is a 3 t 2 equals g m plus m 4 pi 2 approximately equals g m 4 pi 2 approximately equals 7.495 10 minus 6 o 3 days 2 is constant Display style frac a carrot three t carrot two equals frac g m plus m four pi carrot two approximately frac g m four pi carrot two approximately seven four hundred ninety five c d o t ten carrot minus six left frac text o carrot three text days carrot two right text is constant where m display style m is the mass of the sun m display style m is the mass of the planet and g display style g is the gravitational constant t display style t is the orbital period and a display style a is the elliptical semi major axis the following table shows the data used by Kepler to empirically derive his law. Upon finding this pattern Kepler wrote For comparison, here are modern estimates <laughs> Planetary acceleration Isaac Newton computed in his Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica the acceleration of a planet moving according to Kepler's first and second law. The direction of the acceleration is towards the Sun. The magnitude of the acceleration is inversely proportional to the square of the planet's distance from the Sun the inverse square law, this implies that the Sun may be the physical cause of the acceleration of planets. However, Newton states in his Principia that he considers forces from a mathematical point of view, not a physical, thereby taking an instrumentalist view. Moreover, he does not assign a cause to gravity. Newton defined the force acting on a planet to be the product of its mass and the acceleration. See Newton's laws of motion. So, every planet is attracted towards the sun. The force acting on a planet is directly proportional to the mass of the planet and is inversely proportional to the square of its distance from the sun. The sun plays an unsymmetrical part, which is unjustified. So he assumed in Newton's law of universal gravitation all bodies in the solar system attract one another. The force between two bodies is in direct proportion to the product of their masses and in inverse proportion to the square of the distance between them, as the planets have small masses compared to that of the Sun, the orbits conform approximately to Kepler's laws. Newton's model improves upon Kepler's model, and fits actual observations more accurately see two-body problem. Below comes the detailed calculation of the acceleration of a planet moving according to Kepler's first and second laws. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Acceleration vector. From the heliocentric point of view, consider the vector to the planet r equals r r caret Display style math bf r equals r hat math bf r, where r display style r is the distance to the planet and r caret display style hat math bf r is a unit vector pointing towards the planet d r 
carrot d t equals r carrot equals theta theta carrot d theta carrot d t equals theta carrot equals minus theta r carrot display style frac d hat math bf r d t equals dot hat math bf r equals dot theta hat bold symbol theta q quad frac d hat bold symbol theta d t equals dot hat bold symbol theta equals dot theta hat math bf r where theta caret display style hat bold symbol theta is the unit vector whose direction is 90 degrees counterclockwise of r caret display style hat math bf r and theta display style theta is the polar angle and where a dot on top of the variable signifies differentiation with respect to time differentiate the position vector twice to obtain the velocity vector and the acceleration vector r equals r r caret plus r r caret equals r r caret plus r theta theta caret r equals r r caret plus r r caret plus r theta theta caret plus r theta theta caret plus r theta theta caret equals r minus r theta 2 r caret plus r theta Plus two r theta theta caret display style begin aligned dot math bf r and equals dot r hat math bf r plus r dot hat math bf r equals dot r hat math bf r plus r dot theta hat bold symbol theta d d o t math bf r and equals left d d o t r hat math bf r plus dot r dot hat math bf r right plus left dot r dot theta hat bold symbol theta plus r d d o t T theta hat bold symbol theta plus r dot theta dot hat bold symbol theta right equals left d d o t r r dot theta caret two right hat math b f r plus left r d d o t theta plus two dot r dot theta right hat bold symbol theta end aligned so r equals a r r caret plus a theta theta caret display style d d o t math b f r equals a underscore r hat bold symbol r plus a underscore theta hat bold symbol theta where the radial acceleration is a r equals r minus r theta two Display style underscore r equals d d o t r r dot theta caret two, and the transversal acceleration is a theta equals r theta plus two r theta. Display style underscore theta equals r d d o t theta plus two dot r dot theta. Topic: Inverse square law. Kepler's second law says that r two theta equals n a b 
display style r caret 2 dot theta equals nab is constant the transversal acceleration of theta display style underscore theta is zero d r 2 theta d t equals r 2 r theta plus r theta equals r a theta equals 0 Display style FRAC D left R carrot two dot theta right D T equals R left two dot R dot theta plus R D D O T theta right equals raw underscore theta equals zero. So the acceleration of a planet obeying Kepler's second law is directed towards the Sun. The radial acceleration A R Display style underscore text R is a r equals r minus r theta 2 equals r minus r n a b r 2 2 equals r minus n 2 a 2 b 2 r 3 Display style underscore text r equals d d o t r r dot theta caret two equals d d o t r r left frac nab r caret two right caret two equals d d o t r frac n caret two a caret two b caret two r caret three. Kepler's first law states that the orbit is described by the equation p r equals one plus epsilon cos theta display style frac p r equals 1 plus var epsilon cos theta differentiating with respect to time minus p r r 2 equals minus epsilon sin theta theta Display style frac p dot r r caret two equals var epsilon sin theta dot theta or p r equals n a b epsilon sin theta display style p dot r equals nab var epsilon sin theta differentiating once more p R equals N A B Epsilon cos theta theta equals N A B Epsilon cos theta N A B R two equals N two O two B two R two Epsilon cos theta Display style p d d o t r equals nab var epsilon cos theta dot theta equals nab var epsilon cos theta frac nab r caret two equals frac n caret two a caret two b caret two r caret two var epsilon cos theta. The radial acceleration a r display style underscore text r satisfies p a r equals n 2 a 2 b 2 r 2 epsilon cos theta minus p n 2 a 2 
B two R three equals N two of two B two R two epsilon cos theta minus P R Display style pa underscore text r equals frac n caret two a caret two b caret two r caret two bar epsilon cos theta p frac n caret two a caret two b caret two r caret three equals frac n caret two a caret two b caret two r caret two left var epsilon cos theta frac p r right. Substituting the equation of the ellipse gives p a R equals N two a two B two R two P R minus one minus P R equals minus N two Two R two B two Display style pa underscore text R equals FRAC N carrot two a carrot two B carrot two R carrot two left FRAC P R minus one FRAC P R right equals FRAC N carrot two a carrot two R carrot two B carrot two The relation B Two equals P A display style B caret two equals pa gives the simple final result A R equals minus N two a three R two Display style a underscore text r equals frac n caret two a caret three r caret two. This means that the acceleration vector r display style math bf d d o t r of any planet obeying Kepler's first and second law satisfies the inverse square law. R equals minus alpha r two R carrot display style math bf d d o t r equals frac alpha r carrot two hat math bf r, where alpha equals n two a three display style alpha equals n carrot two a carrot three is a constant and r carrot Display style hat math bf r is the unit vector pointing from the sun towards the planet, and r display style r is the distance between the planet and the sun. According to Kepler's third law, alpha display style alpha has the same value for all the planets. So the inverse square law for planetary accelerations applies throughout the entire solar system. The inverse square law is a differential equation. The solutions to this differential equation include the Keplerian motions, as shown, but they also include motions where the orbit is a hyperbola or parabola or a straight line. See Kepler orbit. <laughs> Newton's law of gravitation By Newton's second law, the gravitational force that acts on the planet is F equals M planet R equals minus M planet alpha R minus two R carrot Display style Math BF F equals M underscore text planet Math BF D D O T R equals M underscore text planet alpha R carrot minus two hat Math BF R where m planet display style m underscore text planet is the mass of the planet and 
alpha display style alpha has the same value for all planets in the solar system according to newton's third law the sun is attracted to the planet by a force of the same magnitude since the force is proportional to the mass of the planet under the symmetric consideration it should also be proportional to the mass of the sun m sun display style m underscore text sun so alpha equals g m sun display style alpha equals g m underscore text sun where g display style g is the gravitational constant the acceleration of solar system body number i is according to newton's laws r i equals g j does not equal i m j r i j minus 2 r caret i j Display style math bf d d o t r underscore i equals g sum underscore j n e q i m underscore j r underscore i j caret minus two hat math bf r underscore i j where m j display style m underscore j is the mass of body j r i j display style r underscore ij is the distance between body i and body j r caret i j display style hat math bf r underscore ij is the unit vector from body i towards body j and the vector summation is over all bodies in the world besides i itself in the special case where there are only two bodies in the world, Earth and Sun, the acceleration becomes R Earth equals G M Sun R Earth Sun minus two R carrot Earth Sun Display style math bf d d o t r underscore text earth equals g m underscore text sun r underscore text earth text sun caret minus two hat math bf r underscore text earth text sun, which is the acceleration of the Kepler motion. So this Earth moves around the Sun according to Kepler's laws. If the two bodies in the world are Moon and Earth, the acceleration of the Moon becomes r Moon equals g m earth r moon earth minus 2 r caret moon earth Display style Math BF D D O T R underscore text moon equals GM underscore text earth R underscore text moon text earth carrot minus two hat Math BF R underscore text moon text earth. So in this approximation the moon moves around the earth according to Kepler's laws. In the three body case the accelerations are R Sun equals G M Earth R Sun Earth minus two R carrot Sun Earth plus G M Moon R Sun Moon minus two R carrot Sun, Moon, R, Earth equals G, M, Sun, R, Earth, Sun minus two R carrot Earth, Sun plus G, M, Moon, R. Earth Moon minus 
2 r caret earth moon r moon equals g m sun r moon sun minus 2 r caret moon sun plus g m earth r moon earth Minus two R carat moon, Earth, display style begin aligned, Math BF DDOT R underscore text sun and equals GM underscore text Earth R underscore text sun, text Earth carat minus two hat, Math BF R underscore text sun, text Earth plus GM underscore text moon R underscore text sun, text moon carat minus two hat, Math BF R underscore text sun, text moon, Math BF DDOT R underscore text Earth and equals GM underscore text sun R underscore text earth text sun carrot minus two hat math BF R underscore text earth text sun plus GM underscore text moon R underscore text earth text moon carrot minus two hat math BF R underscore text earth text moon math BF DDOT R underscore text moon and equals GM underscore text sun R underscore text moon text sun carrot minus two hat math BF R underscore text moon text sun plus GM underscore text earth R underscore text moon text earth carrot minus two hat math BF R underscore text moon text earth end aligned these accelerations are not those of Kepler orbits and the three body problem is complicated but Keplerian approximation is the basis for perturbation calculations see lunar theory Topic position as a function of time Kepler used his two first laws to compute the position of a planet as a function of time. His method involves the solution of a transcendental equation called Kepler's equation. The procedure for calculating the heliocentric polar coordinates r theta of a planet as a function of the time t since perihelion is the following four steps: compute the mean anomaly m equals n t, where n is the mean motion; n p equals two pi. Display style n c d o t p equals two pi radians, where p is the period. Compute the eccentric anomaly e by solving Kepler's equation. M equals e minus epsilon sin e display style m equals e var epsilon sin e compute the true anomaly theta by the equation 1 minus epsilon tan 2 theta 2 equals 1 plus epsilon tan 2 E two display style one var epsilon tan caret two frac theta two equals one plus var epsilon tan caret two frac e two compute the heliocentric distance r equals a one minus epsilon cos e display style r equals a one var epsilon cos e the Cartesian velocity vector can along be trivially calculated as v equals mu a r minus sin e 1 minus epsilon 2 cos e Display style math bf v equals frac sqrt mu a r left wrangle sin e sqrt one var epsilon caret two cos e right wrangle. The important special case of circular orbit epsilon. Topic zero gives theta e equals m because the uniform circular motion was considered to be normal, a deviation from this motion was considered an anomaly. The proof of this procedure is shown below. <laughs> mean anomaly, m The Keplerian problem assumes an elliptical orbit and the four points 
S the Sun at one focus of ellipse Z the perihelion C the center of the ellipse P the planetan A equals C Z display style A equals C Z distance between center and perihelion the semi major axis epsilon equals C S A display style var epsilon equals C S over a the eccentricity B equals a one minus epsilon two display style B equals a sqrt one var epsilon caret two the semi minor axis R equals S P display style R equals S P the distance between sun and planet Theta equals z s p display style theta equals angle z s p. The direction to the planet is seen from the sun. The true anomaly. The problem is to compute the polar coordinates r theta of the planet from the time since perihelion t. It is solved in steps. Kepler considered the circle with the major axis as a diameter and x display style x the projection of the planet to the auxiliary circle y display style y the point on the circle such that the sector areas zcy and zsx are equal m equals z c y display style m equals angle zcy the mean anomaly the sector areas are related by z s P equals B A Z S X display style Z S P equals frac B A C D O T Z S X the circular sector area Z C Y equals a two M two Display style z c y equals frac a caret two m two. The area swept since perihelion z s p equals b a z s x equals b a z c y equals b a 2 m 2 equals a b m 2 display style zsp equals frac b a c d o t zsx equals frac b a c d o t z c y equals frac b a c d o t frac a caret 2 m 2 equals frac a b m 2 is by kepler's second law proportional to time since perihelion so the mean anomaly m is proportional to time since perihelion t m equals n t display style m equals n t where n is the mean motion topic eccentric anomaly e when the mean anomaly m is computed the goal is to compute the true anomaly theta the function theta equals f m is however not elementary kepler's solution is to use E equals Z C X display style E equals angle Z C X X is seen from the center. The eccentric anomaly is an intermediate variable, and first compute E as a function of m by solving Kepler's equation below, and then compute the true anomaly theta from the eccentric anomaly E. Here are the details. 
ZCY equals ZSX equals ZCX minus SCX a two M two equals a two E two minus a epsilon a sin E two display style begin aligned ZCY and equals ZSX equals ZCX SCX frac a carrot two M two and equals frac a carrot two E two frac a var epsilon c d o t a sin E two end aligned division by a two halves gives Kepler's equation M equals E minus epsilon sin E. Display style M equals E var epsilon sin E. This equation gives M as a function of E determining E for a given M as the inverse problem. Iterative numerical algorithms are commonly used. Having computed the eccentric anomaly E, the next step is to calculate the true anomaly θ. True anomaly, θ Note from the figure that C D equals C S plus S D Display style overwrite arrow C D equals overwrite arrow C S plus overwrite arrow S D so that a cos E equals a epsilon plus R cos theta display style a cos E equals a var epsilon plus R cos theta dividing by a Display style a, and inserting from Kepler's first law, r a equals one minus epsilon two one plus epsilon cos theta. Display style frac r a equals frac one var epsilon caret two one plus var epsilon cos theta. To get cos e equals epsilon plus one minus epsilon two one plus epsilon cos theta cos theta equals epsilon one plus epsilon cos theta plus 1 minus epsilon 2 cos theta 1 plus epsilon cos theta equals epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus epsilon cos theta display style cos e equals var epsilon plus frac 1 var epsilon caret 2 1 plus var epsilon cos theta cos theta equals frac var epsilon 1 plus var epsilon cos theta plus left 1 var epsilon caret 2 right cos theta 1 plus var epsilon cos theta equals frac var epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus var epsilon cos theta the result is a usable relationship between the eccentric anomaly E and the true anomaly θ. A computationally more convenient form follows by substituting into the trigonometric identity tan 2 x 2 equals 1 minus cos x 1 plus cos x Display style tan caret two frac x two equals frac one cos x one plus cos x. Get tan two e two equals one minus cos e one plus cos e equals one. Minus epsilon plus cos theta one plus epsilon 
cos theta 1 plus epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus epsilon cos theta equals 1 plus epsilon cos theta minus epsilon plus cos theta 1 plus epsilon cos theta plus epsilon plus cos theta equals 1 minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 1 minus cos theta 1 plus cos theta equals 1 minus epsilon 1 plus epsilon tan 2 theta 2 Display style begin align tan carrot two FRAC E two and equals FRAC one cos E one plus cos E equals FRAC one FRAC var epsilon plus cos theta one plus var epsilon cos theta one plus FRAC var epsilon plus cos theta one plus var epsilon cos theta eight PT and equals FRAC one plus var epsilon cos theta var epsilon plus cos theta one plus var epsilon cos theta plus var epsilon plus cos theta equals frac 1 var epsilon 1 plus var epsilon c dot frac 1 cos theta 1 plus cos theta equals frac 1 var epsilon 1 plus var epsilon tan caret 2 frac theta 2 end aligned multiplying by 1 plus epsilon gives the result 1 minus epsilon tan 2 theta 2 equals 1 plus epsilon tan 2 e 2 display style 1 var epsilon tan caret 2 frac theta 2 equals 1 plus var epsilon tan caret 2 frac e 2 this is the third step in the connection between time and position in the orbit topic distance r the fourth step is to compute the heliocentric distance r from the true anomaly theta by kepler's first law r 1 plus epsilon cos theta equals a 1 minus epsilon 2 display style r 1 plus var epsilon cos theta equals a left 1 var epsilon caret 2 right using the relation above between theta and e the final equation for the distance r is r equals a 1 minus epsilon cos e display style r equals a 1 var epsilon cos e Topic see also circular motion free fall time gravity Kepler orbit Kepler problem Kepler's equation Laplace runge lens vector specific relative angular momentum relatively easy derivation of Kepler's laws starting with conservation of angular momentum topic notes topic references topic bibliography Kepler's life is summarized on pages 523 to 627 and book 5 of his magnum opus Harmonis Mundi Harmonies of the World is reprinted on pages 635 to 732 of On the Shoulders of Giants, The Great Works of Physics and Astronomy works by Copernicus, Kepler, Galileo, Newton, and Einstein. Stephen Hawking, ed. 2002 ISBN 0-7624-1348-4 A derivation of Kepler's third law of planetary motion is a standard topic in engineering mechanics classes. See, for example, pages 161 to 164 of Miriam J. L. 1971, 1966. Dynamics, Second Ed. New York, John Wiley. ISBN 0-471-59601-9. Murray and Dermot, Solar System Dynamics, Cambridge University Press, 1999. ISBN 0-521-57597-4. V. I. Arnold, Mathematical Methods of Classical Mechanics, Chapter 2. Springer 1989, ISBN 0-387-96890-3 External links B. Surendranath Reddy, Animation of Kepler's Laws, Applet Derivation of Kepler's Laws from Newton's Laws at Physics Stack Exchange
Crowell, Benjamin, Light and Matter, an online book that gives a proof of the first law without the use of calculus see section 15.7 David McNamara and Gianfranco Vidali, Kepler's Second Law, Java Interactive Tutorial, https colon slash slash web dot archive dot org slash web slash two oh oh six oh nine one oh two two five two five three slash http colon slash slash w dot phi dot seer dot edu slash courses slash Java slash MC underscore HTML slash Kepler dot HTML, an interactive Java applet that aids in the understanding of Kepler's second law. Audio, Kane, Gay, 2010, Astronomy Cast Johannes Kepler and His Laws of Planetary Motion University of Tennessee's Department. Physics and Astronomy, Astronomy 161 page on Johannes Kepler, The Laws of Planetary Motion 1 equant compared to Kepler, Interactive Model 2 Kepler's Third Law, Interactive Model 3 Solar System Simulator Interactive Applet Kepler and His Laws, Educational Web Pages by David P. Stern